So I'm going to say something that's a bit controversial. I don't think the price of AI is going to get cheaper. My theory on this is that it is a marketing ploy to get more and more companies and users to buy into AI and become attached to it so that over time the price can actually go up. And I have several things that I want to point out for why I believe this. First off, I know this is not a common belief. When I talk to 10 people, 9 out of 10 of them will disagree with me. And I'm okay with that. I've, I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong. But I have a sneaking suspicion that I'm not. I will give you an example of Uber. And I know it's different. It's a different circumstance, different company, different time period. But when I was in California, let's say 10 years ago, I remember very vividly paying like 5 or $6 for a Uber ride from one part of town to another. Where years before, if I had done that same ride, I'd have done it with a taxi and it would have probably been $30, $40. At that point, I was bought in. I'm like, I'm not going to use taxis anymore. I'm just going to use Uber. And what I had been missing at the point, because I was naive, I was looking at the, the world through rose-colored glasses, is Uber was being subsidized by investors. And we took advantage of that. It was amazing. But then they took over the market and have been able to raise prices since. I believe that same thing is going to happen with AI. And there's so many indicators to me that point me in that direction. Take a look at this article. Sam Altman says he's losing money on the OpenAI's $200 a month subscription because people are using it more than we expect. $200 a month, they're not making a profit. To put this in perspective, even the people that are spending the most money on these subscriptions is losing them money. Now, what does that mean for the $20 a month people or the free people? This is where's your it. I like reading through stuff, but it's very counter to how I view AI. I agree with some of his things, but I also disagree greatly with some of his uh, takes as well. But I don't like to live in an echo chamber. So I do like to just kind of get those perspectives to make me think outside of my box. But I don't think he's wrong about this. Every single person that goes to ChatGPT is losing the company money. They are a financial drain on the company, whether they pay or not. And then you move into this Yahoo Finance article where they say that OpenAI is likely to incur losses of $14 billion by 2026. Now, they do also say that it's despite the company expecting to post up to $100 billion in annual sales by 2029. I know I've been a part of some massive companies that never even got close to $100 billion. Those are the top of the top companies. And I think OpenAI has a chance to be one of those, so I don't disagree with that. But take a look at the latest model from OpenAI, ChatGPT 4.5. The price to utilize this via the API is astronomical. And I've tested this model a bit, and I do not see a massive 15x improvement over ChatGPT 4.0, but yet the cost is 15 times higher. And really it's because there are really two major, major costs for these models. There's the training, which Sam has actually said the GPT 4.5 training is their largest model yet. And that it was very expensive. But then there's the inference. And what we're paying for here is the inference, but this cost also needs to trickle down to pay for the training. The inference is actually becoming more expensive over time. And to talk about why that's becoming more expensive, you can think about the complexity of models, at least specifically when it comes to the traditional, like we want to scale the number of parameters up. They just increase exponentially. You can kind of see this projection here from like the low range to the upper range. If we continue on the current trajectory of training models, the cost is to train them. Training only is going to become astronomical. Sam Altman kind of confirms that we've already hit a peak in these scaling parameters. He says the age of giant AI models is already over. And what does that mean? It means we need to do different things like reasoning models. That's been a big breakthrough that's happened since this article. And then we had some major breakthroughs from DeepSeek that allowed training to be a lot cheaper 
using the reinforcement learning techniques that they, they published information about. We've had breakthroughs. And I think it's things like that that are going to push us in a direction of, are we still going to be compute bound? Or are we going to come up with some major advancement that drives the cost down? And I don't know what side of the fence you're on, but I think re no matter what, it's pretty clear to me that I think a lot of the things that have been said, especially when, if you look back at a lot of the articles, they'll talk about the price going to zero back when this was being said. And Anthropic's kind of in a similar position. So if you know the way SaaS businesses work, so these are software to service businesses, you really want to get to about an 80% margin. Because the way those margins are calculated, it doesn't normally count for your development cost. Because what they are calculating is the idea of, we could stop spending money on development today, and this is how much money we'd make. Now, every company might do this slightly different, but the ones that I've been a part of will say, like, we have 80% margins, and that's because we take away our R&D cost, and that's how much money we can make. And what this article kind of goes through is, they are currently at a margin of 50% to 55%. And remember, that is not taking into account, most likely, the R&D cost of building, training, all of that stuff. And it's significantly lower than the 77% average. So I always thought it was 80%. This is 77%. And it calls into question like their long-term ability to raise those margins. And then if you look at this A16Z post, you can see that a lot of these companies are spending 80% of their total capital raised on compute. And they're still limited on compute. How many times do I hit API limits on Claude? They've spent billions on compute. Just today, I was hitting issues with Claude 3.7. All of these companies are running into compute constraints. A lot of people talk about the training cost. And I do think there are techniques like what DeepSecret is doing to bring down the cost of training. It, millions of dollars still sounds like a lot of money to me. But really, in the grand scheme of thing, if you get a billion people actually using it, it's not that much money. Really, what we need to zone in on is the inference cost. And what we're seeing is the inference costs are far exceeding the cost of training. And this piece like really stands out to me. If ChatGPT-like LLMs are deployed into Google search, like search, that would represent a direct transfer of $30 billion of Google's profit into the hands of the picks and shovels of the computing industry. And what picks and shovels actually means here is that is typically just compute and hardware. Those are the tools that you use to do the job. And in this case, that silicon and the data center, the, the hardware. So Anthropic right now is losing money. In fact, there are reports of it losing billions of dollars. And you can see here, this is from the Ed Zitron. It's estimated that $918 million was their revenue and they lost 5.6 billion. I don't know how anyone can't tell me that this isn't being greatly subsidized by VCs. But I wanna take a look a little bit at Claude 3.7's pricing. $15 per million output tokens, $3 per million input tokens. Now that may not seem like a lot, that is actually incredibly expensive to do any amount of massive workload on. And then the other counter that I would have to that is if 3.7 is better, shouldn't 3.5 be cheaper? But no, they've actually kept the exact same price for Claude 3.5 Sonnet. They now have it as a legacy model. The price is not coming down like it should have. I'm shocked that the price didn't change here. I'm shocked it actually didn't go up, and I'm shocked it didn't drive Claude 3.5 down. If you take a look at this announcement, Anthropic raised a Series E at a $61.5 billion post-money valuation. That makes them an incredibly large private company. They raised $3.5 billion. It's astronomical the amount of money that they raised here. You can't tell me that this is not being subsidized to some degree. My guess is they are also losing money on every $20 a month subscription. And they are also maybe breaking even, if not losing money, on API services right now. Then there's DeepSeek. DeepSeek is maybe one of the shining stars in all of this because their models are amazing and they've got the cheapest price. 
The problem is their APIs are incredibly slow. Even the people that are hosting DeepSeek, I have to wait so much longer for any response for them because I don't think they have the compute behind them either because of just demand or price or whatever it is, but it's just a slower service to use for a lot of my stuff. Like I, my last video I did, I talked about using DeepSeek R1 as my planner for some of my code. That takes a while. I will let it sit there for five minutes sometimes and be working on something else. But if you go into the prices, you know, it kind of ranges de depending on the provider. Some of them, you know, like this one, Nebius, they call it the DeepSeek R1 Fast, so they've probably given it more compute. You can pay $2 a million input and $6 a million output to get it faster. Or you can do the slower ones like I do and pay like 55 cents and $2.19. Or for example, this one from Novita, it's $4 on the input and $4 on the output, which is actually kind of weird. It's usually always more on the output, so I'm not sure what's going on there. But regardless, the price can vary substantially. In uh, typical SaaS businesses, a lot of companies are moving to what they're calling value-based pricing. So if you go back in time, a lot of companies pay, you would pay per seat. So you would pay like for a seat to Salesforce and you got the functionality. What a lot of them are moving to now is like per use, the value that they're providing per use. And you get that indication from Sam Altman where he posted an idea for paid plans. Your $20 plus subscription converts to credits you can use across features like deep research, O1, GPT-45, Sora, et cetera. No fixed limits per feature. And you can choose what you want. If you run out of credits, you can buy more. I'm willing to bet now this is where they're going to go. They're going to be able to maintain people in this $20 a month plan. And then they're going to make it pretty much like a video game. You basically can sign into your, your chat GPT. You can use it up to a certain point. But if you want to play more, you got to pay up to refresh your credits. You got to do the in-app purchase there. And unfortunately, I think they have to do that. To bring this back to Uber, think about it the way surge pricing works. I've been sitting at a convention before and had a ride confirmed only to have it canceled and my price being 20% higher, 30% higher because Surge got initiated. And the driver that had confirmed it probably saw that he could make more by picking someone else up. That's probably what's gonna happen with a lot of this AI over time. They're going to have to have Surge pricing, especially during key times. Funny, because I had never even read this article, but I was doing some research for this video and I felt them making the exact same reference that I did. Not many people think of it like this, I don't even know who State Tech Magazine is or if it's even a reputable place. But reading through this, I do think this lines up very well with my thinking about it. I think AI costs will be going up, not down. And they will no longer need the entry-level pricing that they're driving right now to actually get participation in them. These companies have to become profitable. So yeah, I had someone in one of my previous videos say, Cursor is going to become cheaper over time, not more expensive. I'd be willing to bet that that is wrong. Cursor may become cheaper at the baseline. They may, may Maybe they become $10 a month, but they're going to figure out a way to charge you to make more money. It will not be cheaper long term. The model that we're using, we're always going to want to use the best model. Those big models are always going to be more expensive. Because if you're coding at a deficit to someone else, that's costly to you and your company. We're going to have a tendency to want to use the best models. I'm curious what all of you guys think. I'm willing to bet it's going to be 90% of people in the comments below saying AI for sure is going cheaper. And if you believe that, I would love to understand your exact thought process for how that's possible. I know compute is supposed to be improving, but we don't see the step function levels of compute improvements. In fact, what we see is NVIDIA driving prices up on the things that they're doing. So we know data centers are becoming more expensive. We also see that inference is getting more expensive for the bigger models. We see some minor light with things like deep seek reinforcement learning, some of the things that they're doing to kind of improve uh, inference speeds with the way they're activating certain parts of the model. Those are great. But in my mind right now, AI is the most funded it will ever be. They are getting the most money from investors 
that probably will happen. What we're going to see over time is that money starts trickling down because they're going to start looking for returns on it. So we are getting the most subsidized AI possible right now. So we are going to need a massive improvement in compute or model technology or something that allows us to actually drive these prices down. Now, am I saying Claw 3.7 is going to get more expensive? I don't know. But will Claw 4.0 be more expensive? Probably. Because at that point, if it comes out a year from now, they're going to be looking to become more profitable. And they're going to need to get to a point where they can actually start making money or closing that gap out of the losses that they've had. I do think the frontier, the, the models that are the best, will always be the most expensive. I just can't see those coming down in price in any meaningful way. And if you go back to the example that I talked about earlier about Cursor, Cursor is an incredible value right now. You have a company that needs to make money on top of paying Claude. I'm willing to bet Cursor is losing money and then Claude is losing money. We have two companies that need to make money. So does that mean $40 a month? Probably. I'm betting it's a bit higher than that when you're using everything that they have and they have like unlimited of the non-premium models. Like I could get hundreds of dollars of value out of Cursor. There's no way in my mind that that could stay $20 a month. All right, so that's it. I know this is a controversial one. Leave comments below. If you agree with me, I'd love to understand why. If you disagree, I'd also understand why too, because you know it's not about being right or wrong. It's about thinking about it from all the different perspectives. I would love to know step-by-step step why you think AI is going to become cheaper. You know, do you think there's going to be major improvements in compute? Do you think once data centers are built, things will be fine because we won't have that infrastructure cost anymore? Do you think NVIDIA is going to lower prices? Do you think models are going to be trained or built like more efficiently? And how do you think inference is going to scale over time? How do you think that's going to actually drive prices down? If you want to talk more about this, join my Discord. To the links in the description below. I'm curious where everyone's going to land on this discussion. This one's a bit different than my normal videos, but I do think it's an important topic for us to talk about because I feel like there's just so much hype around AI right now that very few people are being realistic about this being the best of times. All right, everyone. Thank you again. If you made it to the end, please like and subscribe. That would be amazing. Out.